There's a popular early 19th century English phrase that goes, what goes up must come down. That's just as relevant today as it was 200 years ago. While space exploration enthusiasts may argue that numerous unmanned spacecraft have been launched into the solar system in deep space without any intention of landing, when it comes to human-controlled missions and especially the latest trends in reusable space vehicles, a crucial issue arises. How to safely bring humans and spacecraft back to the Earth. Similarly for Starship, as it envisions a future role as a spacecraft with significant responsibilities in transporting passengers and cargo between Earth and other planets, ensuring the safe return of the spacecraft becomes critically important. And that's why SpaceX utilized the only method that rocket scientists have ingeniously devised, using heat shields to prevent spacecraft from burning up in the Earth's atmosphere upon re-entry. However, it must be said that a heat shield system for a spacecraft the size of a module is already challenging, and for a colossal spacecraft like Starship, the TPS, Thermal Protection System, becomes even more complex. In the second launch of Starship in November, the destruction of the upper stage in the final seconds of the engine burn eliminated the opportunity to assess the heat shield's performance. Furthermore, some debris seemingly fell off the spacecraft during its ascent into space. Although the loss of TPS during Starship's second test flight was negligible compared to previous tests, it could pose a serious issue if Ship 25 attempts to re-enter the atmosphere, which is not part of the mission plan. SpaceX's ultimate goal is to develop a fully reusable rocket system, but achieving this will require a reliable TPS for the upper stage of Starship. In preparation for potential improvements in subsequent flights, we can observe the latest signs at Starbase. Take a look at these rings. Do you sense something peculiar? Initially, it appears to be a part of a typical Starship. However, upon closer inspection, there's something unconventional. This new ring employs a different type of pin to attach the heat shield tiles. We can compare it to previous versions that use a three-clip system for each tile, and they were much more spaced apart. What's even more interesting when we glance slightly sideways, it seems like there's additional piece of metal that can be inserted. Not only that, they are much smaller, potentially enhancing their durability and making them less susceptible to damage. Although it's currently uncertain what this means for Starship, it could be a durability test, and it may not appear in practical use unpredictably. Or it could be a hybrid approach with larger sections of the ship using larger tiles, while challenging areas like the edge of the ship utilize smaller ones. We'll have to continue monitoring to see where these changes lead. Perhaps this is a new step forward for Starship, regardless of its intended purpose. Nevertheless, for the upcoming third test flight, SpaceX will undoubtedly have to demonstrate a more robust performance for these heat shields, as this is one of the safety concerns mandated by the FAA, the regulatory body granting launch licenses for Starship. Be honest, Creating of heat shields that meet all the requirements of Starship is no easy feat. SpaceX has spent a lot of time developing the heat shield capable of safely returning orbital Starships back to Earth. These tiles are designed to protect the rocket during atmospheric entry. The ship will enter Mars's atmosphere at speeds of around 27,000 kilometers an hour. It will slow itself down using a belly flop maneuver, similar to the skydiving technique. Starship will have to withstand some high temperatures. The air hitting the space shuttle during re-entry reached about 1,650 degrees Celsius as it compressed against the surface. Perseverance, NASA's latest Mars rover, reached similarly toasty temperatures of around 1,300 degrees Celsius when it entered the planet's atmosphere in Feb. SpaceX chose stainless steel for the Starship to better protect against those high temperatures. In a January 2019 interview with Popular Mechanics, Musk explained that aluminum and carbon fiber operate in a steady state up to around 150 degrees Celsius. Stainless steel, on the other hand, can reach up to 870 degrees Celsius. That's an improvement, but it means the steel will need some help to endure a landing. The crucial aspect is that Starship tiles are affixed to the stainless steel exterior using studs. Elon also fixed the problem with the missing tiles on Starship by inserting a white, flexible ceramic fiber mat between the back of the tile and the stainless steel of Starship. The mat's probably something like a Cowell 3000, which can be used up to approximately 1530 degrees Celsius without fail. Even if one or more tiles fall off, that mat will still be adhered to the ship. In theory, Starship structure can thus withstand and remain functional at temperatures approaching 800 degrees Celsius, whereas the shuttle's heat shield had to keep the vehicle's aluminum structure below around 180 degrees Celsius. Besides, another particularly wise decision by SpaceX is the choice of hexagonal-shaped heat shields instead of square or rectangular ones 
like traditional shuttles. According to scientific research, hexagonal tiles have several advantages over square or triangular alternatives. Reentry will subject them to strong forces. Each tile can distribute stress effectively when it has more neighbors, resulting in more evenly spread of the load and smaller extremes on any particular tile. In the worst case, square tiles would transmit along a row, whereas hexagonal tiles will always spread it out. Of course, so far, Starship has yet to attempt to survive an orbital velocity re-entry with some 25,000 ceramic heat shield tiles mounted directly to its steel skin. But if successful, SpaceX's incredible simple design could give Starship significant advantages over the space shuttle or any other spacecraft in the past that made regrettable mistakes in designing heat shields. Rocket scientists are pretty smart, but like all scientists, they sometimes get it wrong. And sometimes the only way we can learn is by making mistakes. At times, the data modeling used to make assumptions and designs is wrong, and occasionally, the methods, materials, or construction are proven ineffective. The results of both kinds of errors can be disastrous and even fatal. These errors may be failures or inaccuracies in analysis, as in one example where both the Apollo Command Module and the Space Shuttle were designed using incorrect pitching moments determined through inaccurate real gas modeling. The Apollo CM's trim angle angle of attack was higher than originally estimated, resulting in a narrower lunar return entry corridor. The actual aerodynamics center of the Columbia was upstream from the calculated value due to real gas effects. On Columbia's maiden flight, STS-1, astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen had some anxious moments during re-entry when there was concern about losing control of the vehicle. On the other hand, an error may be the failure to fully consider the effects of the launch or flight environment as is the case of the 2003 Columbia disaster, where foam debris from part of a structure that attached the external fuel tank to the shuttle appeared to strike Columbia's left wing after liftoff. It was later found that a resulting hole on the left wing allowed atmospheric gases to bleed into the shuttle as it went through re-entry, and the spacecraft disintegrated, killing all seven astronauts on board and leading to the eventual retirement of the space shuttle fleet. In the case of the space shuttle, each craft was covered by around 24,000 refractory heat shield tiles, and the Smithsonian reports that each tile was meticulously and laboriously inspected before each flight, with between 30 and 100 tiles needing to be replaced before each mission, and as noted above, each had to be custom-made specifically for its unique place on the shuttle. It remains to be seen whether innovative, rapidly replaceable heat shield designs like that of SpaceX's Starship can live up to their design potential. But if they prove economically and practically feasible, they may greatly accelerate the refit process, transforming how humans and technology go up to space and come down safely. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.